Hey everyone, this is Cami from the School of Engineering at USC. Thanks for joining. I'm gonna go ahead and just give everyone a couple of minutes to join and then I'll get started. Uh, please stand by, we'll just have about another couple minutes and then we'll get started. Thank you. Hey everyone, this is Cami from the School of Engineering at USC. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just um, slowly start getting started. I think we have a little bit of a sizable group today, so um, I want to make sure I have a chance to answer all of your questions. Um, a couple of really quick favors. Um, we um, do have a, a good group uh, today, but what I ask is that if you can please um, hold your questions until I go through these very short slides. Some of the questions that you may have, um, may be answered in the things I cover. It should take me just about 10 to 15 minutes, and then I'll go ahead and try as much as possible to answer any questions that you may have, okay? So um, just do me a favor and hold your questions for, for a moment, um, and then I'll go ahead and, and get started here, okay? So, um, Okay. Okay. For those of you just joining us, thanks for being here. Uh, my name is Cami. I'm with the School of Engineering at USC. I oversee graduate admission here in the School of Engineering. Um, if you can all, um, for those of you just joining, if you can all just do me a big favor, um, I am going to go through these short few slides. Um, it's a going to take me just about 10 to 15 minutes. Um, if you can hold your questions for me until um, I conclude um, these short few slides, because many of the things that um, I talk about here may answer some of your questions. So I like to use everybody's time wisely, um, just so I can try to get as much as possible to your questions. So if you can please hold your questions until um, I wrap up the slides, I would appreciate that. Okay. Okay, so um, I'll go ahead and get started. So thank you so much for joining. Um, we are here to kind of talk about our master's and PhD programs in engineering and computer science. Um, for those of you um, who don't know, um, USC is one of the world's leading private research universities um, and one of the oldest private research universities on the West Coast of the United States. Um, we have 22 academic schools and divisions here at USC, which is really important because um, the um, interdisciplinary nature of our education um, is something that's really important to um, our deans um, here um, in order to really kind of see how engineering intersects with many other disciplines. Okay. Okay. So for those of you just joining us, please hold your questions until I wrap up the, the slides. Um, and that would be helpful. It's only myself today. Okay. So if you can help me out there, that would really be appreciated. Okay, so um, here in the School of Engineering, we have eight academic disciplines, um, and you can see them all here. So when you apply for a graduate degree, you can either uh, specialize in your in your area, or you can diversify. So if you have a, um, a bachelor's degree or equivalent in mechanical engineering, of course, you can also pursue a master's or PhD in mechanical engineering, but you would also be eligible to apply for such programs as aerospace engineering or civil engineering or biomedical. So please kind of think about that in terms of your path. Um, when you apply for a, a program here in the School of Engineering, you can apply for two programs with the one application fee. Um, and so you can apply for a master's in mechanical engineering and a PhD in mechanical engineering, or if you want to apply for two PhD programs or two master's programs, 
we all within the School of Engineering, you may certainly do so. So that really allows you the opportunity to see, um, you know, if in the best case scenario, if you got um, admitted to both, you can just choose which one you want to enroll in. OK, so just know that. Please also know, um, as, as I just mentioned about the application fee, you get um, to apply for two programs. Um, just know I'm not um, the school is not um, offering a lot of um, application fee waivers this year. So just so you know, I know many people have asked me that recently, um, but we're not kind of in a position to give um, many fee waivers um, in this year. OK, so um, what I'll do now is I'll talk about the master's program. So the master's program um, in the School of Engineering is designed to enhance your expertise in a specific discipline. That being said, our master's programs are course based programs and they do not have a research component or a requirement. So um, that being said, most of our master's students, you know, um, earn the master's degree to go and work in industry. I would say about 20 percent of our master's students do go on to a Ph.D. either at USC or somewhere else. Um, the master's program will take about one and a half to two years to complete. Um, and so just kind of plan for that. Uh, here's a little bit of the information on the master's um, application requirements. So you need to have a bachelor of science degree in engineering or computer science or math or one of the hard sciences. There is an online application with a $90 application fee, as I mentioned. Um, you will, um, as I said, you can apply for two programs within the School of Engineering. Uh, you'll need to submit official transcripts. And let me pause here for a moment because I'll tell you that one of the most common delays for people's applications is the transcripts. So those need to be official transcripts. So for those students, I can give the example of students um, studying here in the United States. You can go on to your um, log into your student portal of your university and print out, um, you know, a transcript. And that is unofficial. So what you need to do is you need to get one from your university's registrar's office um, or whatever your, your um, university calls that office where they give you a copy of the transcript and it's an official one and it has their letterhead on it and everything. So that is what an official transcript is. And you can scan that and then put that into the online application. OK, so just make sure you do that. We cannot make any admission decisions based on unofficial transcripts. And that's what causes most of the delays. OK, you will need to submit a resume or CV and a personal statement. Uh, and with a personal statement for the master's program, um, you know, it can be, I would say, a maximum of two pages. Uh, we don't have a lot of hard requirements for our personal statement, but in it, you should really explain, you know, any other um, information about yourself that you would like the admission committee to know, because what we have is everything that you submit. So if you would like me to understand if you're a good fit and you would be successful in the master's program, anything like that, you should put in your personal statement. OK, um, the resume or CV, that's pretty self-explanatory. Letters of recommendation are required for only some of our programs, but not all. If you do submit letters of recommendation, please make sure um, you contact your recommenders uh, uh, well ahead of time. So if you're applying to the fall, um, you should be asking for your recommenders now. Um, so definitely do that or if you haven't already done so. OK, so uh, make sure you do that. And even if the program you're applying for does not require letters of recommendation, you are able to submit them. So just because they're not required, um, you know, doesn't doesn't matter. Um, the GRE is, is not required uh, this year. Many students are asking me, can I already took it? Can I still submit my GRE scores? But um, I would not recommend doing that because we um, as the admission um, committee will will not look at the GRE score. So just to keep everything um, uh equal. Um, we're not considering GRE scores at all. OK, um, if you are uh, studying at a university where um, English is not the language of instruction, um, uh, you're an, if you're an international student, you need to submit the TOEFL or the IELTS, so the English language proficiency. Um, for the TOEFL, you need to have a 90 with 20 on each section on the internet-based TOEFL, and the IELTS is 6.5 with 6 on each section. OK. All right. Um, for those of you interested in summer research experience, this is a, a summer program um, only for second and third year students, and you have to be a U.S. citizen. Um, so please feel free to ask me if you have any questions on that. Um, but we do have this program, especially students that think um, they need research experience um, and want to do a Ph.D. These summer research experiences are, are really valuable. So please feel free to contact me separately if you have questions about that. And that kind of leads me a little bit into the Ph.D. program. So if you um, 
uh, those of you who are interested in applying for the PhD, um, it's different from the master's because you absolutely need to have some prior experience and interest in research. Um, if you think about the, the commitment, it's about five to six years. And so they definitely will be very selective. They really want to find people that have had um, experience in research, um, not saying that you had to have a published a paper in a journal or anything like that, but show that you have had research experience in some kind of way. Um, because that is a commitment and they want to make sure that if you're going to be in there and doing that, that you're going to be, you know, dedicated to, to doing that. Okay. Um, USC aims to fully fund its PhD students. So basically you're not going to get admitted into a PhD program unless we can fund you. Okay. And the best thing to do is simply apply by the uh, application deadline and anybody that applies by that application deadline and is admissible, um, you know, you'll be reviewed and receive funding if you're admitted. Okay, the admission decisions are done by a faculty committee um, and those um, uh, the admission is very largely dependent on the match between you and the faculty member. Okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, more about that. So the application requirements are, if you look here, um, for numbers um, one through four is pretty much the same as the, for the masters. Um, when you look at item number five, the supplemental materials, the personal statement, you really need to see um, and identify a couple of professors here at USC that you'd be interested in working with. And you would talk about those um, professors in your personal statement. So talk about your research experience and why um, you think those professors are a good fit for you, what you can contribute to their labs um, and their research um, groups and things like that. So that's what you're going to do in that personal statement. And that is a very important part of the PhD application um, uh, requirement. The three letters of recommendation should come from academic sources um, primarily. Um, if you have perhaps two from professors and maybe one from a a supervisor, you who, a supervisor who oversaw you um, at an internship, that is okay too, but primarily they should be academic references. Okay, um, make sure you demonstrate in some kind of way in your CV, if you have an abstract of a paper you wrote, um, and anything, and the people you ask to um, recommend you, um, make sure that they are from people um, that they can talk about your abilities in depth, but do find ways all different ways to demonstrate that you have had some research experience and ability, okay? Um, so all the rest of that is the same as for the masters, the GRE is not required, the TOEFL or IELTS for the um, uh, for international students. The TOEFL um, and the IELTS is a little bit higher for PhD students because um, some PhD students will be a TA as part of their funding. So they want to make sure you have a good mastery of English. Okay, application deadlines. So for the master's programs, we accept students for both the fall and the spring semesters. So if somehow you don't make it for the December 15th deadline, which is the, um, the deadline for the fall, you always have um, the spring also to, to plan for, and that's the next cycle. Um, PhD applicants are only accepted in the fall. Okay, so make sure for anybody looking to apply for the fall, which I imagine many of you are, um, the deadline is December the 15th. One tip I can give you, absolutely do not wait until the last minute. So if you wanna be considered for funding, you should not be waiting until December 15th to submit your application. Um, and because I have received email, frantic emails every single year for the 19 years I've worked at USC, on that very day, somehow the internet went down, their computer crashed, there was a glitch in the system. So please avoid those things because if your application comes in after December the 15th, there's two things. Number one, we cannot guarantee we can give you a decision for, for the for the fall. Um, and number two, you would have missed then the, the opportunity to receive some of our partial merit-based funding for master's students and the PhD funding for, um, yeah, for the PhD. Okay, so that's my best advice there with the application deadlines. Please do not wait until the 15th or the 14th even <laughs> if you can. Okay, so scholarships. Now, all of our scholarships for master's students are partial scholarships. Okay, so I do want to make sure I emphasize that. Lots of times students ask me about, um, you know, the, the scholarships and they are important. So if you think about a, um, a master's program for the two years, for the entire two years, just tuition is about 65,000 to 70,000 US dollars for the entire master's program. So please do plan accordingly. Um, you know, our scholarships at most would cover 25% of your tuition if you are if you are selected. Um, so just think about, make sure that you have your finances in order to be able to 
um, help to kind of fund your, your education there. Okay, so um, you would have to apply by that application deadline, as I said, to be considered for our partial merit-based scholarships. Um, if you're identified as a candidate, the committee uh, will contact you sometime between January and March, okay, for the fall. Um, some scholarships are awarded by USC and others by donors, either corporate donors or individual donors, and I'll definitely... Um, uh, uh, talk about that in a moment. Um, one recommendation, really look for external funding. There's a lot of organizations out there that provide funding for, um, uh, especially for engineering and computer science. Um, so, so definitely look at that. Um, and one of the common questions um, students usually will ask is um, uh, whether we offer TA positions to master's students. And unfortunately, um, the School of Engineering is um, here at USC is not equipped to do that because um, the TA positions are largely given to the PhD students. OK, so just kind of plan for that. Um, one example of that scholarship that I said was um, funded by a donor is um, Meta. So they have a research center here at USC, and they've also been able to provide some scholarships. Theirs is only for U.S. citizens, but we have many that are open for both um, U.S. citizens and international students. So don't worry about that. But I just wanted to give you an example of one that was funded by a corporate donor. Um, this one, the criteria happens to be that you, you know, you have an interest in AI um, and that you're pursuing a master's program in electrical engineering or in industrial and systems. Okay, so that's just an example to give you, but we have many other scholarships. Um, just make sure you apply by the scholarship deadline and please keep in mind they are only partial scholarships. Okay. Okay. Um, as I wrap up here, um, those of you that just, this kind of goes along a little bit with the funding. For those of you that are um, thinking about working full-time and doing your master's part-time, we have about a thousand students of our master's students who do that. And what they do is they work um, full-time and their employers, many of their employers, um, help to pay for their graduate education. And then they do their program part-time. Uh, many of them do it online because we have a very robust um, online delivery program. So just think about that. Um, that's a really great way. It takes you a little longer sometimes because many of our students that are working full-time, you know, they work full-time. So they take maybe one class every semester or two. Um, so it takes you a little bit longer as opposed to if you were doing it full-time. But then again, it's such a nice benefit um, for many of these people because their companies um, help to pay for their tuition. OK, OK, so I'm going to wrap up here, but please do feel free. Um, I can tell you a lot about admission criteria and that kind of thing. But with our um, student ambassadors, they can really tell you a lot about student life, what the programs are like. Um, we have a lot of great PhD students, too, that can answer a lot of those questions about what it's like working with specific professors in the labs. So, um, yeah, I, I welcome you to, to do that. And now... Um, and I, I did as I promised, I think. I, I finished that in 15 minutes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the next 30 minutes to be able to um, uh, answer any of your questions. What I'm going to do here, so please um, just kind of help me out a little bit here because I am... Um, uh, many of my staff are out today. So I'm going to go ahead and you can put your question in the Q&A um, and um, just in the interest of everybody's time. And I'm going to go ahead and answer um, as many of these as I can. But I have about 30 minutes to be able to answer your question. So, um, uh, yeah. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Just give me a moment and I'm going to go ahead and read some of these questions. OK, so, um, yeah, go ahead and put your questions um, in the Q&A panel and I'll go ahead and address them. Okay, give me a moment. <clears throat> okay. Uh, okay, so you'll definitely get um, the slides and the, re the recording after the, the session. We'll go ahead and post those on the site. Um, Keith Sanath is asking, um, I'm applying for the uh, PhD. I'm an international student at Cal State LA. Um, Okay, so what I'm going to do at the conclusion of this, I'm going to send you the English proficiency um, webpage, and you should look at that. There are some complications. So if you have finished all four years at a U.S. institution, you do not have to complete the English language proficiency. But if you did one year somewhere else in a country that whose language of instruction was not English, um, then you do have to take the IELTS. Okay, so I'll, I'll put the English language proficiency webpage in the chat in a moment. Okay, um, Kalu is asking, I'm interested in applying for a master's. I have a city and guilds of London qualifications. Can this be accepted for admission? Um, you know, so Kalu, you need to have a bachelor's or equivalent in engineering or computer science. So you can feel free. I'm going to, um, after the conclusion of these um, 
questions, I'll put my contact information in the chat. And um, for any of these kind of really specific questions, um, you can contact me separately. Okay. Um, yeah. Sorry, I don't have that answer for you right um, right offhand. Okay. Um, Yoke is asking, just checking, is there merit-based scholarships for international students? Yes, um, I did mention that earlier. Um, our scholarships are eligible for all, all students. <clears throat> okay, um, all right, Kalu. Uh, for PhD applicants, I don't have a master's degree and I haven't done any research, but I've implemented some practical projects in electrical. Uh, yes. Yeah, you um, and that's a good question. You don't have to have a master's degree to apply for the PhD program. Many of our students do, and that's only because maybe in their in their undergraduate studies they didn't have a lot of research experience, and so they went to get a master's and got that. Um, but if you do have some research experience and can demonstrate that, then certainly you can apply. Okay, uh, okay. I heard that USC USC is GPA centric, and is that true? So, um. That is, is is not so. So the GPA is is a tricky one. Okay, so um, we do a, a, of course an initial screening of a student's GPA, and that is important. But what we actually do that many people have a misunderstanding about is that we actually look line by line at every course you took um, in your in your all of your transcripts in your studies. So even if somebody has a high GPA, if their coursework does not demonstrate that they are equipped to do the program they're applying for, you still would not get admitted. And so we need to make sure somebody can have a high GPA, but then you know, they, they don't have the qualifications. Somebody can have a little bit of a lower GPA, but maybe all of their you know good performance was in all of their engineering related courses. So that's kind of true and not true. <laughs> okay, so I hope I can answer that. Um, Okay. Uh, official transcripts. Um, okay. Sorry. I'm reading these questions here. Okay. Um, sorry. I'm just kind of reading these. I have a bachelor of arts in marketing and a PG diploma in data science. Can I apply to the master's in analytics? Um, okay. So, um, for this person, I'm sorry. I, I, it doesn't list your name here. Um, I think you're going to have to really, you're going to have to really demonstrate you have the mathematical ability. And so, so for some programs, we will accept students that have a background, for example, like maybe in economics or in mathematics. Um, if you have a Bachelor of Arts in marketing, you really do need to demonstrate you have a like a pretty good mastery of math. So if you want to contact me separately, then um, I'm happy to, to kind of chat with you. But um, that will kind of depend a lot on, um, you know, your, your other qualifications aside from that Bachelor of Arts in marketing. OK, um, all right. So. For PhD programs, should the references be sent before the 15th as well, or is there a different deadline? Uh, yeah, so they need to be sent by the December 15th. Now, we understand sometimes um, your recommenders don't get to them in time, but that's why I recommend very much contacting them as early as possible and giving them as much time. Give them some prompts and some information about yourself to make sure that they can you know, do that as quickly as possible. So we do understand, but make sure all of the other parts of your application are in by the, the 15th. The, the committees understand that the recommenders come in a little bit later um, sometimes, but really just try to get everything else in. Simran is asking, I had some connectivity issues. I missed the first 10 minutes. Okay, yeah, you can get the recording. Um, do scholarships affect funding if you uh the do scholarships affect the funding you may get from graduation loans? No, we don't look at that. Uh okay, Mukun is asking, I'm pursuing a bachelor's in mechanical with a minor in CS at UIUC. I've done more courses than what's required by the minor and done internships. I wanted to know if I should apply to the normal MSCS or the MS for scientists and engineers. Um let's see here. You can, okay, Mukund, uh, yeah, you can apply directly for the master's in computer science. If if they feel like there's something that's lacking, they will recommend you for the other program. But if you minored in computer science, you should probably have um, the background to apply for the master's in computer science, just the general program. Okay, next question is, I'm from India. I applied for the master's in applied data science. I've still not received a decision. Hmm. Okay, so you, you'll need to contact me separately about that. I'm not sure. You applied on the 13th of July. You applied on the 13th of July for the, the, the spring semester? 
Okay, so you're, you're going to have to contact me separately. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll put my contact information in the chat, okay? Okay, Aditya is asking, what's the difference between the Master of Science in Cybersecurity and the Master's in Computer Science? So it's kind of self-explanatory. So the Master's in Computer Science is actually a Master's in Computer Science, and you actually need to have a background in Computer Science, um, a bachelor's degree, to apply for that one. Um, the Master of Science in Cybersecurity, um, you don't necessarily have to have a background in Computer Science to apply for that. Okay, Lohit is um, asking, I'm doing an online bachelor's degree in parallel with my undergrad. How should I share this information on the ECE pre-application portal? Um, yeah, you'll need to just upload um, the documentation for that online bachelor's degree. Um, okay, Farheen is asking, can we apply for the PhD in astronautics being an international student? Uh, none of our programs are um, excluded from international students or US citizens. So yes, you can. Raghav is asking, what's the ideal GPA for obtaining admission? Um, that's a that's a tricky question. So I we don't have minimums. Um, you know, to me, if you know you're a solid student or not. Um, so if you performed well in your um, engineering related courses related to the program that you're applying for, then I would say you should um, simply apply. Um, can you submit TOEFL scores after the deadline? Uh, Mohammed is asking that. You can. Um, they, we will not be able to make a decision on your application until we get the TOEFL scores. Okay. Okay. Um, a question here, where should we put the abstracts of our paper that's uploaded into the online application? Daniel is asking... I came late. I'm not sure if you already mentioned this, but for the masters, do letter um, do the letters of recommendation need to be academic? Um, they don't need to be. Um, so letters of recommendation for master's programs, what's really important is that you get them from somebody who can speak about your abilities in depth. So don't get them from just some random professor where you in a class of 500 other people and he or she doesn't really know you, but they just know you got an A in the class. That is completely worthless um, in terms of submitting an, um, a letter of recommendation. So it doesn't have to be academic. It could be somebody who supervised you in an internship, um, but somebody that can kind of speak about your abilities is the best thing to do. Okay. Uh, here's a question. I'm looking to apply for the ECE PhD program. What will the admission committee look for in my statement of purpose and letters of recommendation? So um, that part I talked about uh, um, earlier. So you need to make sure your personal statement talks about the professors you'd like to work with. Um, and then what you'd contribute to their lab. Um, letters of recommendation, as I just mentioned, they, they need to be from academic references that can kind of speak about your abilities, hopefully um, in the research area. Okay. Um, I'm on the verge of completing the application requisites for PhDs, and I would be interested in summer internships. Is it possible to join this just before starting the PhD? Uh, no. Um, Josh is asking, how do I apply for two programs under the one application fee? So you would go ahead and submit the first application, and then there is a process um, that can be found on our site. Um, you can contact me separately, but what they'll do is you submit one application, and then um, there's a form you fill out that um, will give you a code to waive the second um, application fee. Let me just make a note here so I make sure I, I have all of those, those things handy. Okay, um, the next question is, um, letter, letters of recommendation is letterhead mandatory. Um, no, it is not mandatory for the letters of recommendation that would be on letterhead. Can a master's student do summer undergraduate research? No. Uh, Carlos is asking what's the difference between the resume and the personal statement. Um, your resume is actually, um, what you would use for example, if you're applying for a job. So you should go and, and, and look that up. The personal statement is like an essay. Okay, Harshal, um, what kind of on-campus jobs, internship opportunities will pro be provided to international students? Um, internships are not provided to our students. So internships are those that things that you apply for. And we have a lot of resources for you to be able to apply for those. Um, same with on-campus jobs. So, so those are not kind of, there, there's plenty of those, but those are up to the student to um, be um, you know diligent about applying for those. Uh, okay. A question here will be reflected on the degree if the program was done part time or full time. No. Uh, I'm applying for the PhD in electrical engineering. Do we need to contact faculty for PhD admission? No. 
Uh, most of our students do not contact faculty ahead of time. So that this is why I emphasize so much that the letters of recommendation or the personal statement, I should say, really need to explain your knowledge of the professors that are doing work here at USC and why you would be a good fit for them. So that's why it's not it's not critical you contact the, the professors ahead of time, but you need to demonstrate that you know what they're doing and why you would be a good fit there. Okay. Um, so um, I'm trying my best to answer all of your questions. Um, some of them are um, things that I have covered earlier. So just kind of forgive me, but um, I'm trying to focus a lot more on the questions um, from for, like the specific questions that people have here. Um, I'm applying for PhD and currently in a master's program after four years in industry. Do I need to have two academic references? My former colleagues hold doctorates and can attest to my interests. I also have a master's research advisor. Yes, that's that's fine. Okay. Is it possible to give us a typical profile of someone who wants to be admitted to USC? Um, you can find those items um, uh, on our webpage. You'll kind of see a little bit about that. Um, the GPA and the TOEFL scores and things like that. Um, I'm not sure that we have that readily available for um, last year's class. Okay, Ian is asking, is there a recommended roadmap for the master's program on which courses to take on a certain semester? Uh, yes, so if you got admitted, you would meet with an advisor. When you look on our schedule of classes or what's called the USC catalog, you'll be able to see there that they'll tell you which um, courses are available in the fall and, and the spring. Okay, Daniel. Okay. Um, Oh, you're asking about the GRE, Daniel. Um, for GRE, is it not considered at all? No, it is not. Not for this year anyway. Um, okay. Um, here's a question. Are there are only official electronic official transcripts required or should hard copies be sent by mail after the application is submitted? No. So submit electronic official, electronic copies only in the online application. And if you're admitted, they will ask you for the hard copies. Okay, Amapola is asking if my bachelor's is not in STEM, but I've done prerequisites for the master's in data science. Am I still eligible? Um, if you're talking about applied data science, uh, you should be. Um, it depends what your, your bachelor's is in. Okay. Uh, you mentioned recommendations. Can I have the letter from an advisor who was my mentor, but is in the industry? Uh, okay. So, um, sorry, uh, you haven't listed your name here, so I can't really address your question to you directly, but, um, you kind of, um, I'm going to have to ask you to clarify that question a little bit, um, because it depends what you're asking about. If you're asking about master's or PhD, <clears throat> okay. Uh, okay. I have a three years bachelor degree in data science. I do not have the transcripts ready as of now. Can I apply and do I meet the eligibility? So you do need to have a for the equivalent of a four year degree to apply for um, the programs in engineering. <clears throat> Okay, Tim is asking, will papers submitted or in review be considered in the review of PhD applicants? Yes. So if you have something um, that you can submit as part of an attachment um, in some way that that details that, um, Tim, you can do that. Okay. Okay, uh, I read that the IELTS has to be officially sent by the center to be considered. So all test scores have to be officially sent um, to us and they're submitted electronically. So when you take the exam, you have to request them to be sent um, to USC. Okay. I have completed my bachelor's degree taught in English. Should I have the IELTS? Um, so I, I'll go ahead and um, right after I wrap up some of these questions, I'll go ahead and submit um, uh, send you the uh, English language proficiency website. Okay, so Carlos is asking about the scholarships for masters. No, so you, there is not a separate application for the scholarships. You need to apply for admission by December the 15th. And if you're considered, you'll be contacted separately between January and March. Okay. 
Okay, so a couple of things here because I'm seeing a few um, patterns of similar questions. Okay, so um, one thing is the application fee waiver. So we are not waiving application fees this year, unfortunately. Um, so um, just please understand that. Um, the second thing is, um, I think some of you are providing kind of your academic background um, for me to look at. And unfortunately, I can't do that um, kind of during this um, session. Um, so so just kind of please forgive me if I'm not able to, to address those. I'm trying to kind of answer these common questions before you apply. Um, so that's kind of what I'm trying to focus on here. Um, the name mentioned in my academic transcript is in the form of initials and in my passport is in the full form. Uh, that should be okay, but just make sure you complete or submit any all forms of ID so that people can um, on the staff can match that up. Okay. Is it recommended to reach out to advisors before applying? Uh, no, uh, you don't have to do that. Um, uh, Daniel is asking, I'm currently applying for the PhD. I did the pre-application. Um, so I'm assuming you're talking about electrical and computer engineering. Um, I was strongly encouraged to apply, but I'm not getting responses from the professors. Okay. So, you know, Daniel, this year that, um, that pre-application process for, um, the electrical and computer engineering department, they've just implemented that. So, um, you know, uh, what I would suggest is why don't you contact me separately and then let me kind of inform them because I think that I'm not sure they worked out some of the, 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 you know, little, uh, glitches in their system. So I, I think what I understand is that they're supposed to be getting back to people within a week. Um, so it's, if it's been over a week, then, you know, you can contact me and I'll help to kind of facilitate that. Um, I have a bachelor's in biology. Can I apply for biomedical, uh, engineering? Yes, you can. Uh, Ian is asking, I'm a naturalized citizen. I have a bachelor's in computer science from my old university. Am I exempted from taking the TOEFL and how would I apply for an exemption? Okay, so let me go ahead and I'm going to send you guys that English language proficiency site, okay? And then you can kind of figure out whether you qualify. Um, what's the exact minimum TOEFL score for PhD applicants? It is 100. Um, okay. I'm an international student from Sri Lanka looking to apply for PhD. What does the PhD stipend usually look like and what sort of support or advice does the university have for students' dependents? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you know, um, to be honest, I am not too familiar with the dependents. Um, but what I do know is, is that the stipend usually covers your tuition as well as living expenses. Um, and so what I think is the minimum for PhD students in terms of the stipend, I believe it's 32,000 annually. Um, it could have increased um, since the last time I checked. Okay, Musa, do you have fee waivers for international applicants? Okay, I think I addressed that one. Okay, Musa, Doc, um, my past studies is in English and the university gave me a certificate of English. Um, okay, sorry, I'm kind of going through these. Okay, sorry, Carlos, I don't have um, too much information about the student athlete information. Okay, um, I'm looking to apply for the ECE PhD program. I'm reaching out to faculty members and current students, but who else should I talk to? Um, you know, th those would be the extent of it. And then please, as I mentioned, just kind of please understand if they don't um, happen to respond to you, which is sometimes common for applicants, um, you know, kind of don't take offense to that and you can certainly still apply. Okay, okay, uh, let me see here. Is it fine if the email ID is different on the TOEFL scorecard and the USC application? Yes. Uh, okay, so for those of you asking about the tuition and fees, um, so I'm gonna take just a moment here. Okay, so I'm gonna do something um, and I'm gonna take a minute and I'm gonna give you a couple of things. So the first thing is, is the site uscengineer.com. On that is going to tell you all of the um, tuition and fees and all the things specific to the program you're interested in. Okay, so some of you are asking me about how much it's gonna cost and that kind of thing. There is a very detailed breakdown for every single program that we offer on there, and you'll be able to, um, to see how what the cost is going to be. 
Okay, and then I'm gonna send you also the English language proficiency. Okay. So for those of you asking about tuition and estimated cost of attendance, please look there, search for the program that you're applying for, and then take a look at the where it says tuition and fees. The second link that I put here is the um, English language proficiency website. And then before I forget, because I've just got another 10 minutes here, I'm going to give you my contact information. So if I don't get to your question, you can certainly contact me separately. Some of you that have very specific questions about your um, uh, your backgrounds. Um, yeah, th those are things I probably won't be able to um, answer too much here. Okay, Sabhari is asking, when can I expect results for the application? So if you apply for the fall, you should get a decision between January and April. Uh, <clears throat> okay. I have a bachelor's degree. So Teresa's asking, I have a bachelor's degree in ecology and can I apply for the envir environmental data science program? Uh, yeah, that should be um, eligible. Um, just if you have, you know, really demonstrate that you have as high as level of the math as you can. Okay. Um, Okay, so for he, you know, the the astronautics department did not update their web page. Um, so we had to kind of inform them the other day that um, the GRE was waived. Um, so you don't need to take it. Okay. Okay, Ian is asking, I wanted to clarify if I also need to include the community college I attended in my application, even though I got my BS in CS at Cal State Fullerton. Uh, so, so here's the thing, Ian, if you list on the USC application that you apply, you attended um, a community college for, you know, um, you know, however long you attended it, they are going to ask you for the transcripts. So if everything, if you kind of transferred everything to Cal State Fullerton, then yeah, you probably shouldn't need to do that, but it's up to you. So if you, if you, um, if you can, and you went to that community college for an extended period of time, I would probably put it, um, but that, that would be what I would say there. <clears throat> okay. Um, where could we contact the PhD students at USC? So Kefan is asking this. So what I would do is if you want to ask PhD students in certain labs any questions, look for the professor's research webpage, and usually they'll list their, their PhD students on there. Okay. Um, does applying for merit-based aid affect chances of admission? So you're not actually applying for merit-based aid um, at USC. You actually don't do that. You're actually applying for admission. Um, so, and that doesn't affect your admission decision. <clears throat> okay, Anisha's asking if there's any upcoming sessions on master's in engineering management. Um, we actually were trying to schedule it because there's a new um, program director for that, um, but we'll kind of keep you posted. If you just stay on our mailing list, we'll let you know. Uh, okay. When can I expect replies from the ECE department for my pre-application status? So as I mentioned earlier, um, that, that question, they usually will reply people to, during like reply to people within the course of a week, but I'll definitely check with them on that one and make sure that they're getting back to people, um, promptly. Okay. Um, I'm a student from India. Should I use Wes or scholar evaluation before submitting my transcript? Uh, no. So when you're submitting it for the purposes of reviewing your application for admission, you don't need to do that. Okay. Um, okay, so Kishan is asking, I'm applying for a PhD. Are hard copies of the official transcripts required? Uh, no, the scanned copy of the official um, isn't required. Do PhD app, um, programs at USC offer health insurance um, and or dependent allowance for dependents? <clears throat> um, the health insurance, yes, um, but the dependent allowance, I would need to find that out for you. I actually don't work directly with the PhD students once they've enrolled, so I actually do not know that question, so I will find that out for you. Um, 
Ederson, I'm an international PhD student. There is a particular approach to getting a fee waiver in my application. Um, okay, so I think I addressed that one. Uh, so my professor worked at my institution closely, but is no longer working there. Would his letter of recommendation still be valid? So the important part is that the person um, uh, can speak about your ability. So whether he or she worked there before um, it is not that relevant. So you can definitely still submit um, a letter from, from that person. <clears throat> okay. Um, for master's students, okay, so Kefan, you're already a student here at USC, so you don't need to submit your TOEFL scores again. They should be able to access them. And um, Kefan, if you have a problem with it, then you should contact us because then, yeah, um, I'm not sure when you um, took it the first time, um, but we'll just make sure that you don't need to do that. If I'm a dual citizen, English is my first language, but my previous study wasn't, well, I need to take the TOEFL. Okay, so refer to that English language proficiency webpage that I put there. Uh, okay, Harshal is asking, what do the admission committee look for in a candidate's personal statement? So um, you'll need to clarify whether you're talking about master's or PhD. Okay. Okay, so a lot of you are asking about engineering management. I can definitely um, go ahead and try to schedule um, a session with the program director there, and he can probably better speak to, to that level. Okay, Joy is asking, um, I'm interested in the PhD program. I hold an undergraduate degree in physics. Okay, I have three years of experience in astrophysics. I am in the process of pivoting. Are there significant overlap in the material and topics? How can a, an applicant like me who lacks the expected background typically evaluate it? So Joy, um, let me think here. So you should, um, and you can contact me separately and I can point you in the right direction, but physics majors are eligible for almost every one of our um, master's and PhD programs. So you would probably need to kind of tell me what program you're interested in, and then I would be able to kind of put you in touch with that, um, that area. So you can kind of explore those opportunities. Um, yeah, we have a lot of physics students kind of going into electrical and computer engineering, ash, uh, astronautics, aerospace, mechanical. Um, yeah, so so Joy, if you want to contact me separately, then I'll, I'll discuss that one with you. Okay. Um, Umu is asking, do I need to have a professor that's willing to take me into their research group for me to apply? So no. So I addressed that earlier. You need to make sure that if you find a professor um, or professors that you're interested in, speak about that in your personal statement and really kind of make a compelling argument why you'd be a good fit for their lab. So you don't have to contact them um, uh, beforehand. Okay. Uh, do we need to stick to the one page rule for resumes? Um, Daniel's asking that. No, you, you don't. Um, so be as concise as possible. Um, but no, for the resume, you don't have to, um, stick to one page. Um, for the master's in computer science, what would the admission committee look for in the statement of purpose? Okay. So that's a good question. So when you submit the statement of purpose, and that's not just for computer science, but when you submit a personal statement for a master's program, what I suggest is that anything else that you want the admission committee to know about you is important, okay? That you use that as a chance to explain any situations, any other skills that you may have and all of that. So if you think about it, okay, so all of you here, I, I've not um, had the pleasure of meeting all of you in person or for you to tell me all of your skills. But when I see your application, I, I have a, a staff that, that reviews your application. When they see that all of the materials, how are they going to determine that you are going to be successfully successful in that program? So think about that. And then think about all the things that you want to say and include. Um, don't, you know, give us nine pages of all of your other criteria. But and if you do feel like there's anything that your transcripts and your um, resume don't say, if you want to kind of talk about certain, you know, um, um, academic goals that you have and things like that, just make sure to put that there. And any other experiences that you want to share with us that would help us make that decision 
that you would be able to successfully complete that, that master's program. Okay. So that's what I say. Sometimes we see ones where, you know, a student says, you know, I didn't do that well in my first semester because, um, you know, I, I had a medical issue or I was taking care of my family or things like that. Um, you know, and you can certainly put those kinds of extenuating circumstances in there. But the important thing is, um, if you switch places with me for a moment, and you would be able to um, see that, you know, when, when we look at thousands of applications, we're trying to look at all of those details and say, is that person, if we admit this person, is he or she going to be able to successfully complete this master's program? Okay, so that's the best advice I can give you there. Um, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, let's see, I have another couple of minutes and then I have my contact information there in the chat. So you can feel free to take that. If I don't get to your question, um, I apologize. But what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to answer as many questions as I can that may other people may benefit from. Um, okay, Sangam is asking, is Duolingo accepted? Uh, it's not. Um, <clears throat> okay, Vimu Ganti is asking, if we apply to two programs with a single fee, do we have to submit different personal statements and LORs for each program? Uh, yes. You do. That's a, that's a good question. So you should not submit, if you're applying for biomedical engineering, a PhD program and a master's program in electrical engineering, you should not really submit the same things. The letters of recommendation, especially because those differ between master's and PhD. But if you're applying for two master's programs and you know, you feel like the letter of recommendation is kind of general, that should be okay, but you'll need to submit them separately as two separate applications. Okay. Um, I want to apply to the master's in analytics, but I don't have a STEM degree. Um, should I apply to the master's in business analytics? Um, yeah, so our analytics program, you do need to have a pretty high level of math. So if you don't feel like you have that, I would probably look at the business analytics program. But analytics has accepted students from all backgrounds. So mathematics, economics, um, and, and other fields. But the critical part there is having the mathematical ability. Okay. Um, okay. Um, Obina is asking, are unofficial transcripts and self-reported test scores okay for admission consideration? Um, unofficial transcripts are not um, accepted. So when I say unofficial, that means something that's like generated from a student portal. Um, so you need to get an official transcript from your university and scan it and upload it into the application. You can self-report your test scores in the application, but we cannot make an admission decision until we actually receive the official test scores from the testing agency. Okay. Okay. So somebody's um, asking, they have a bachelor's degree and would like to pursue the PhD in aerospace, but I don't have research experience. Um, I would not recommend you apply for a PhD program if you don't have some research experience. So um, yeah, unfortunately, um, you will probably have a challenge getting admitted. Okay. Okay. Um, I came late. I missed your response about submitting papers under review. Can we list papers submitting in the portal? Um, yeah, papers submitted, uh, resumes. So anything that you have that you want to include as part of your application, you can upload that into the online application. All right. Um, okay, so as, um, as I mentioned before, um, somebody's asking, I'm not getting responses from the professors I'm interested in. And does that mean they're not taking students? So, you know, my interaction with many of our professors, and I'm sure that the, the professors at your institutions are the same. They have said, I receive hundreds of emails from students um, every day. And it is very difficult for me to get to every single inquiry while still doing my research, while still teaching my classes, and while still, you know, supervising my current students. So please don't get offended if professors don't answer you. As I mentioned before about the PhD um, admission process, and you can play the recording of what I had mentioned earlier, but it's not necessary. So I wouldn't feel discouraged there. It's not necessary to convert your GPA into a four-point scale um, on the online application. Okay, so when you... Um, uh, Padma is asking when, um, if, if you need to do that. So when you report your GPA on the application, you put it in the scale of the university that you are attending or were attended. Okay, can the CV be more than four pages? Uh, th that's fine, as long as it warrants that. Um, I would try to be as concise as possible, but yes, that's fine. Um, 
Okay, word limit for the statement of purpose and letters of recommendation. No, I would, you know, statement of purpose that that's one I would, I would keep it to about two pages. Okay. Um, okay. All right, then. Okay. Um, Kizito is saying, I have research experience, but not in the research area I'm interested in for the PhD. Um, will that hurt my chances? It, it shouldn't, um, without knowing too many details. It depends on the professor. So some professors, they want to see an exact match. Some professors want to see that you at least know what it requires to be in a lab. So I would say go ahead and apply, but you definitely want to make sure that you have an understanding of the field that the, you know, of the area that you're, you want to work in. Okay. Okay. All right. So what I'm going to do, so in the coming days, I'll go ahead and I'll send a recording of the session so you can um, view that. Um, the links here in the meantime, um, English language proficiency, estimated cost of attendance, career um, opportunities um, for, you know, our graduates, all of that stuff, please um, look on that website because we try to make that as robust as possible. So you have a lot of those details. Um, so look at that in the meantime, and then you can feel free to contact me if you don't, if those things don't answer your questions. Um, okay. So we're just about at time. So there's my contact information. It's camellia.lee at usc.edu. Um, I will try as best as I can to answer your questions. I may um, ask my staff to help me um, answer some of your inquiries, but please do look at those resources before you contact me. That's the one thing I ask, because if um, you don't do that, then I'm getting um, kind of, you know, it delays me answering um, all of your questions. So take a look at those things and, and um, make sure that your answer is not there first before you contact me, but I'm happy to help you through um, this, this process as much as I can. Okay, so um, I really thank all of you for joining today um, and and I look forward to receiving your applications uh, and feel free to contact me with any questions after you've reviewed um, the, the applicable material. Okay. All right. I hope all of you have a great day. Thank you so much. Bye.